Greetings, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of All Things Lambda, the community show that hasn't had its musical episode just yet. But when it does happen, I'm sure I'm ready for it. Just kidding, I, I really, really can't sing. Don't ever let me sing. Anyway, let's get into this week's community news. Lambda Federation. We start today off with some Black Mesa 1.0 news. The beta for it has been online for some time now and people are reporting bugs and giving the developers feedback as much as they can. I played it myself too and I gotta say that the game is being brought into a much more polished state. The silence, however, got broken on the 25th of February by Adam Engels, the project lead for Black Mesa. He published a medium-sized blog post on Steam going over some of the events that led him to where he is right now, the project lead of Black Mesa and the owner of Crowbar Collective. He's also giving some pretty good advice in these posts, like how it's not always bad to work for free every so often if it means that you're getting some lucrative connections back from it. You can still compile all the free work that you did in a portfolio and show that to companies where you want to work. Even though you don't get paid directly from it, it can still help you out in the future, which is the case for many that worked on Black Mesa, I assume. This blog post isn't just his story, though. It also has an announcement in there. A pretty big one, actually. And that is that Black Mesa will be officially released on March 5th, which is exactly a week from now. Black Mesa has come a very long way, and I'm really glad to be able to report that it's finally somewhat done. Engels also stated in this post that they'll support the game further past the release date with bugs fixes and the likes, and maybe even some more features and improvements down the line, but probably nothing that is really big. If you want to read this blog post for yourself, I left it linked down in the description below. We're not completely done yet with Black Mesa news though, because Crowbar Collective is currently at PAX East 2020. Look, they're right here, on the map. You can visit them physically. They'll be at booth 24081 and there you'll be able to meet some of Black Mesa's trusty developers, get your picture taken with a HGV suit, and get some free stickers while supplies last. You can also try the game out there. Now, I'm not sure what version of the game they got on display there, but it's most likely the 1.0 version that's currently in beta still. The event runs from today until March 1st, so if the coronavirus doesn't scare you away from PAX East this year, and you really want to meet some Black Mesa folk, then this event is just for you. I've left a link in the description to the official blog post. Half-Life has recently been the subject of an episode of Boundary Break a series created by YouTuber She Says, where he takes the camera anywhere he wants to check out how the games work and what lurks in the great epileptic seizure-inducing void. In this Half-Life-themed episode, he goes across the game to see how things spawn in, what really happens during the launching of the big rocket, and much, much more. He also has gotten some help from Marfi Black, who has a great YouTube channel of his own, analyzing anything related to Half-Life. Not only that, but she says got Mike Shapiro to reprise his role for Barney in the intro of the video. Yes, this is the real Mike Shapiro. No tricks or anything. He also appears at the end of the video thanking She Says for having him on the channel, and he talks about a few things that might be interesting for us. First off, he says that he's really excited for a certain Valve game to come out. But he also talks about a big surprise that's coming soon that will be a blast from the past for some people. Now that's something new that we haven't really heard anything about just yet. Is this directly from Valve? Is this a project that Shapiro is doing? I guess we'll know when the time comes around. If you're interested in this video, and I don't blame you if you are, it's linked down in the description below. Half-Life, the SFM series, is slowly making a return to YouTube after some pretty bad production delays. The laptop that Pinwheel Arts, or Joe Johnston, has been working on has bitten the dust for a while, making it really difficult to work on things. But about two weeks ago, he posted another update to his community page, announcing that the laptop is functional again. Right now, the principal animation is completed and all the scenes are now being cleaned up. Editing is being done too right now and the audio work is also being sorted. There is no doubt that a lot of work goes into making these episodes, so if you want to support Pinwheel Arts the best way you can, then subscribe to his YouTube channel or follow him on Twitter. Additionally, you can support him on Patreon to make it possible for him to do 
do this full time. All of those links are in the description below. I wish Pinwheel Arts the best of luck in finishing this episode. We got a brand new update on the M-Mod Tactical mod for Half-Life 2. This mod is not being developed by the M-Mod developers, but rather by a different team entirely. Keep that in mind. Lead developer AL8197 has been thinking a lot about the mod in the past few months without an update. In these past months, they have decided exactly what weapons will make the cut for the mod, and if this list is a roundup of all the weapons that are going to be in the mod, then damn, that's an entire arsenal. I'm not going to be even able to choose which one I'll be using the most. Along with this list, we got some shots of the AR2 in its new chunkier form for the mod. It has a scope and everything. We also have a shot of the AUG A3 that's gonna be in the game. It sports a nice blue color. Apart from that, we also have a shot of the Desert Eagle, the Beretta M9A1 Tactical, and the Spaz-12, which looks a lot like the regular Half-Life 2 shotgun. They're all nicely modeled. We also got some reload animations for the AK-47 and the Beretta, which both look really good already. They're smooth, yet powerful. After that, we got a shot of the new Metro Cops. We got the standard Metro Cop on the far left, and two new variants next to it. The Armored Metro Cop and the Elite Metro Cop. Both sport different, heavier weapons. We also got a new class entirely. These are the Combine Black Ops. The developer had originally planned to put them in Ravenholm, but that was eventually scrapped. And they will now be in the late game City 17 environments. I'm actually really glad about that change. I don't think they would have fitted in Ravenholm at all. It would kill the atmosphere, kind of. A combined female Black Ops assassin is also planned, but not modeled yet. There are also hazmat combines and operator combines planned for the MOG, but they haven't been modeled yet either. But they will look a lot like the combine variants we saw in Half-Life Alex. And last but not least, there is the combine super soldier, which the developer hasn't thought much about. But this picture is provided, so I think they'll look a bit like the regular combine elite soldiers. There is much more in this update to read, so if you're interested in knowing more about this mod, then go ahead and check it out. I've left a link to this new media update in the description below. Earlier this month, MapLabs announced that they're doing a Cremulantville 2 together with the current head of RunThinkShootLive.com, Don aka Unk. The theme is obviously the same as the first one, just make a weird map. Interpret that as you want. The competition has come to an end recently and the judges closed the submissions for bonus maps just yesterday. I'm really excited to see what has been made for it. Not only did that happen, but MapLabs also released some new Steam library capsule images for a lot of the already released MapLabs competitions in case you want to make them look good in your library. There's one for Cremulantville 2, of course, and one for The Grid, one for Blockout, and even one for Half-Life of Bridge, which we partnered with MapLabs on not too long ago. Now, if you want to download these new capsule images, you can do so by following the link in the description below. It'll bring you to the Twitter thread. Or you can join their Discord server where they will also be posted. That's also linked down below. You know who also has a Discord server? We do! It's all linked down below in the description as well as our social media links which you should also definitely give a follow. Have I made this segue before? Probably. But have I done it in 2020? Do you like my style of doing things? Then you'll probably like my own YouTube channel a lot as well. It's called Glorious Rigby and it's linked down below in the description. A new video is in the works for that channel and that will be online very early March. And I really recommend you go and wait for that and maybe even subscribe to the channel in advance. That would be kind of, that'd be kind of great if you could do that. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to end episode 82 of All Things Lambda. Don't be sad, though, because we'll be back next week with more Half-Life community news. But in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and to ring that bell icon to never miss another episode. Salutations, and take care.